let's get started. So, today, uh, episode two of Math in the Bubble with Mr. Daly, we are going to cover simultaneous equations, just all the different types, which is just elimination and substitution. Um, and then we're going to do a couple of application problems. Um, Alright, um, sorry about the last uh, lesson getting cut short. I probably didn't need to end the, uh, the chat, but I was also having issues with my pen on the it as well, so I was just like, ah, it's too much going wrong, so I'll just um, end it. Um, but hopefully, I, I haven't managed to get around to making a video of the, the remaining problems, but I, I might do that um, over the weekend. Other than that, let's get going. So, simultaneous equations. So, I'm going to start off by doing um, elimination type questions. So this is a, a fairly basic one, um, and that's because if we just simply added these two equations together, our y's will already cancel out because we've got a positive y and a negative y. So um, you don't always have to subtract um, an elimination. I like to subtract because that um, makes more sense to me. But the, you get situations like this where you've got um, direct cancelling going on. So you've got equation 1 and equation 2. So to get a variable eliminated, we just need to add those together. So equation 1 plus equation 2, that's going to eliminate y. So the, the ultimate goal of using the elimination method is eliminating one of your variables. Okay, so let's do that step. So I'll use the thicker pen. Plus y equals 6 and then we're going to add 3x minus y equals 14. So 3x plus x makes 4x, um, and we get 0 here, 0y, zero um, and 6 plus 14 is 20. So that leaves us with a, an equation, 4x equals 20. So we can solve for x simply by dividing both sides by 4, and we're going to get x divide by 4 and get x equals 5. Alright, now once you've got one variable, it's very easy to figure out your other one. You just sort of, you go back to your equations and just look which which one is the easiest one to work out. And it, it seems that equation 1 would be the easiest to, to solve. Um, solve for y on. So we'll do that. So we're going to put this into, that's supposed to be a, an arrow. We're going to put it into, into 1. So Five plus y equals six. So in our original equation, we've put the value x equals five into our equation, and we can solve for y by subtracting it to the other side. Six minus five y equals one. So um, if this was a line intersection case, um, we would have an intersection at 
uh, 5 and 1. Uh, f that is a really annoying feature of this pin. 5 and 1. Okay, this question 10 is a little bit harder because we're going to have to multiply our equations to get the elimination we want. Um, we, can't, we have to actually multiply both because of just the way the numbers are working out. So let's eliminate the x's this time. So if we've got 4x on the top and 5x on the bottom, um, then if we multiply equation 1 by 5 and equation 2 by 4, then we'll end up with the same amount of x's um, and we'll eliminate um, x from the equation. So what we want to do is do 5 times equation 1 and subtract 4 times equation 2. So let's just write that out. Um, so we'll do equation 1 on the top. Uh, 20x plus um, 15y equals 5 times 25, 125. Okay, so this is the new equation one. Our new equation two, we're multiplying that by by four. So four times uh, five is twenty x, and four times negative four is negative sixteen y, and that equals eight times four is thirty two. Okay. So we are doing subtraction, so we want to subtract the, the whole of equation 2, right? So we're going to end up with uh, 0 there, 20 minus 20 is 0, 15 minus 16 minus minus 16 is going to be 31y because we've added 16 because it's a double negative um, and then 125 minus 32 is going to be uh, 93 and we can solve for y Divide by 31, divide by 31, we're going to get y equals 3. Okay, now let's go back into uh, one of our original equations. Uh, let's do just equation 1. So y equals 3 into equation 1. 4x plus 3 times 3 equals 25 so 4x 3 times 3 is 9 so when we put that on the other side it's going to be a minus 9 equals 25 minus 9 4x equals 16 I'm going to divide by four on both sides we're going to get x equals four ah i haven't got this username thing right oh slash mod sorry i'll give that a go right now There we go. Moderator enabled. All 
All right, uh, last one for elimination. We're going to try uh, a decimal elimination. Okay, so just looking at this one, I am spotting that these, the x terms, will be the easiest one to eliminate because 4 times 4 makes 16, or 0 0.4 times 4 is. Um, 1.6 so essentially we're only going to have to multiply equation 1 by 4 to eliminate um, those two terms so um, what we're going to do in the next step is um, 4 times equation 1 what am I doing? Four times equation one minus equation two. All right. So four times equation one will be one point six x plus one point two y. Four times zero point four five is going to be one point eight. And underneath, we're going to have 1.6 uh, plus 0.4y equals negative 1. Okay. Uh, we're going to subtract the whole equation. Leaves us with 0x. Um, 0 0.8y and... 0. Point, wait a minute, not 0. 0.8, 2.8, because we're minusing a minus. Be careful with that, with double negatives when you're doing um, simultaneous equations. So 2.8. So y is going to be 2.8 divided by 0 0.08 uh, good way to do um, decimals just without using a calculator you can just change that to 28 divided by 8 um, now we've got a fraction and both of them are even numbers so we can half and half equals half the top, half the bottom, equals um, 3.5. So y is 3.5. All right, we're going to put 3.5 back into Well, you know what we, we, we can do? We can make an easy equation by without any decimals in it by multiplying by uh, what should we multiply by by 10 we'll multiply the whole thing by 10 so equation 1 times 10 is going to be 4x plus 3y that's going to equal 4.5 and that's just going to be a lot easier to work with it than than all those decimals so this is essentially the same equation as um, the original equation one. Um, it'll draw the same line. So if I open Desmos and I put this into Desmos and I put this into Desmos, then they both draw the same line over, over one another. And that's what happens when you multiply both sides of the equation. Um, yeah, anyway. Because we found y equals 3.5, we can put that into our new equation for 1. 3 times 3.5 equals 4.5. I'm just going to have to keep going this way, I think. Didn't yet leave enough space there. Uh, 4x plus, um, what's that going to be, 10.5?
four x equals negative um, six. So we're subtracting ten point five from both sides. Um, all right. So x is going to equal negative six divided by four. X equals negative one point five. Okay, decimals make make things harder, but essentially it's the same process, except for this is just a, a, a pro tip really, just to save yourself some hassle. But you could actually solve it just without doing that. You just have to probably use your calculator a bit more. Um, okay. Moving on to substitution method. So, with substitution method, essentially we just want to take what we already know. We know that y equals 2x minus 10, so we're just going to chuck that into the equation there, because that's what y equals, right? So, um, I like to do, I still label my equations 1 and 2, but I'll just go 1 into 2. Okay, so that looks like x plus um, 2x minus 10. I like to just put it in a bracket because um, it just shows that you've substituted something in. Alright, x plus 2x is 3x. Because there's no factor and uh, coefficient in front of the bracket, it, the bracket doesn't actually do anything in this case. 3x minus 10 equals 2. Uh, we want to add 10 to both sides to eliminate that 10, so we're going to get 3x equals 12 and now we want to divide by 3 on both sides we'll leave us with x and that'll get us to x equals 4 so our steps adding 10 both sides dividing by 3 both sides okay all right well, we're not actually done we've still got to um, figure out what y is. I, I always like to just use the one that's been rearranged for y, even though that, that second one's quite simple. Um, when you've got an equation rearranged for y, you may as well use it. It'll get you straight there. So we're just putting 4 in where there was an x in our original equation, 2x minus 10. So y is going to be 2 times 4 is 8 minus 10 makes minus 2. So we get our final answers of y equals minus 2, x equals 4. Alright. Have you had to boot anyone yet, Shubadad? scared today all right uh, this question 8 is pretty much the same except we've got an equation 1 which is rearranged in term it's been X has been made the subject uh, so we're gonna sub in uh, X equals Y minus 2 this time so this is gonna come in here uh, you just got to you got to be careful with this negative because really it's a negative 1 so when we put it into our equation we're gonna get 3y minus 1 times uh, y minus 2 so it, it can be helpful to just to put that minus 1 just so that you don't um, mess up the fact that it's going to change the minus 2 into a positive 2 
uh, and that equals zero. So that was one into two. So three y minus one times y is minus y, minus one times minus two is positive two. Okay. So we're gonna get two y plus two equals zero. Put the, uh, the two on the other side, it's gonna be a negative two. And divide by two, we're gonna get y equals negative one. Divide by two both sides. Uh, subtract two both sides. Uh, all right. And because we've got an equation for x, we may as well use it. x equals something in y, negative one minus two. So x is going to be negative three. And those are our final answers for that one. <laughs> yeah, all right. Question 18. It's the last one on that um, list. So this one, uh, hasn't you're going to need to rearrange one of the equations to make x or y the subject? Um, in my opinion, it will be easiest to rearrange equation one for y. We're going to rearrange. So this is using our rearranging skills. Uh, one to make y the subject. So at the moment it's a minus y, so if it came to the other side of the, the equals it would be 5x plus y equals 13. Now if we move this 5x to the other side it's going to become a negative 5x. And yeah, now we've made y the subject of equation one. So this is our new equation one. Um, and we're gonna put it into two now. So x plus um, five times 13 minus five x minus 17 equals 0. All right. Let's do this. So the x is the same. We got 5 times 13, uh, 65. 5 times negative 5, negative 25x, minus 17, 0. We're going to put our 65 and our minus 17 together and x and our minus 25 together gonna get negative 24 x plus uh, 65 minus 17 it's going to be 48 um, yeah. and that equals zero uh, Whenever I'm putting, I like to put the negative term on the other side because it brings everything back to positive. You could put the 48 and then you get negative 24x minus equals minus 48, but I'm always looking to eliminate negatives wherever possible. So we're going to move the x term to the other side. So we're going to get 48 equals 24x. And then we're going to divide by 24 both sides. We're going to get x equals 2. Uh, right. Now, we made an equation for y because we made it the subject. So we're going to use this equation here to find y. y equals uh, 
equals 13 minus 5 times 2. So y equals 3. And that should work for the other formula. 5 times 2 plus 3 equals 13. It does. Alright. Um, so, uh, did, have, have I uploaded the full Theta textbook for you guys? Just someone type an answer on the, on the chat. I can't remember if I did. Most of you grabbed. Anyway, um, basically, chapter chapter five um, exercise. Is, so this number stands for the chapter. Um, in the digital, this is the digital copy that I uploaded. Well, I think I uploaded it. Um, yeah, so that it's the same, but the chapters are different. So it, this is the textbook, and this is the digital copy. They just move the chapters around. Um, so we're going to have a go at doing these first two um, problems. So in the application questions, you've got to get the hang of writing your own um, linear equations to use um, for simultaneous equations. OK, so. Number one, two numbers that have a sum of 34 and a difference of 8. So, how do we write that? Well, our two numbers, they're going to be different numbers, right? So, um, we're just going to use x and y. So, x plus y. If we added those two numbers, we don't know what they are, we'd get 34. And they have a difference of 8. So, x minus y equals 8. So, that's sort of forcing x to be the big number biggest number. Um, you could force it to be the smallest number if you had equals negative 8, but that's just getting too more, too complicated. So we've got, these are two different equations that we can uh, use to um, solve simultaneous equations. Okay, so I would have to say that the easiest way to solve this would be with the elimination because we've got a positive y and a minus y, so if we just add equation 1 and equation 2 together, then it's going to eliminate y and um, we're going to be left with a pretty easy equation to solve. So we're just going to add equation 1 and two together we're going to get 2x equals 42 so x was is going to be 21 and that means that if we put that x into equation 1 we're going to get 21 plus y equals 34 or in other words y equals 34 minus 21, y equals 13. 21 and 13 have a difference of 8, and they are, if you added them together, you get 34. So, that's that one. 
All right. Uh, last question I'm going to do, and then I'll just hand it back to you guys. You guys can um, um, maybe suggest questions that you want me to try and solve. Um, right. Two railway bridges have a total length of 435 metres. So this is very similar to the last question. So one bridge is 78 metres longer than the other. So that's... Seventy-eight, and if we put them together, so we call this X, we call this Y, we have that difference of seventy-eight. So X plus Y equals. Um, I probably should have just left you guys to do this one. It's almost the, exactly the same. So adding the two bridges together, you get a total of. 435 meters and if you subtract the bigger bridge from the smaller bridge you're going to get 78 meters um, I mean let's just um, let's use substitution this time just so um, we, we use a range of methods so I'm going to rewrite equation 1. So equation 1 make y subject. So by do to do that, all we have to do is put x on the other side. So y equals 435 minus x. Okay, now we're going to put our new equation, so this is our new equation 1, we're going to put it into equation 2 x minus um, we'll use minus 1 because we, we're inserting a whole bracket uh, 435 minus x equals 78 so Expanding that bracket, we're going to get x minus 435 plus x equals 78. If we put our two x's together, we get 2x minus 435 equals 78. It's a terrible 7. Um, if we had now we need to add 435 to 78. What's that going to be? 513. Yes. X is going to be half of 513 which is not a nice number, but it's not too bad. 256.5 meters. Okay, that's the length of bridge X, the biggest bridge. So we have an equation for Y, so we may as well use it. Um, y equals 435 minus x, so we might as well make this a standard written form, so we um, just put it under there like that, um, borrow from there, we're going to get 14 minus 6 is 8, 
Borrow again. 12 minus 5 is 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. There's the two bridges. All right, that um, is about all I want to do.